Welcome to the Fine Lecture Series. On behalf of the Perinatology Research Branch of NICHD and the National Institutes of Health, my name is Lami Yo, and I am one of the developers of Fine. This lecture will review the normal characteristic features of fetal cardiac views on ultrasound. Specifically, we will focus on the nine cardiac diagnostic planes automatically generated by the FINE method. Our intent is to help sonologists understand normal fetal cardiac anatomy in general. As a reminder, the next slide will show the FINE method in which we mark anatomic structures using the anatomic box tool. The first structure to be marked is the aorta at the level of the stomach. Next is the aorta at the four-chamber view, the crux, right atrial wall, pulmonary valve, superior vena cava, and the transverse aortic arch. After this structure has been marked, within several seconds, all nine fetal cardiac views will appear at the same time and here automatic labeling is shown. Only for the purposes of this presentation, we are showing each of the views enlarged. This is the three vessels and trachea view, four chamber view, the five chamber view, left ventricular outflow tract, short axis view of the great vessels or the right ventricular outflow tract, the abdomen view, ductal arch, aortic arch, and the last view is the superior and inferior vena cava. We refer to the nine fetal echocardiography views automatically generated and displayed by FINE as diagnostic planes, which was just shown and are listed here. Now let's review the normal anatomic characteristic features of each of these views. Four chamber view. The majority of the heart should be located in the left chest in a normal anterior left position. The heart should occupy about one third of the thoracic area. One of the ways to determine this visually is to imagine an outline of the fetal heart. If this same outline can fit into each of the lung fields, then the heart occupies about one third of the thoracic area. The cardiac apex should point to the left by 45 plus or minus 20 degrees in relation to the anterior posterior axis of the chest. Finally, there should be no pericardial effusion. Here is an example of fetal cardiomegaly in which the outline of the heart clearly is larger than each of the lung fields. Normal cardiac situs is situs solidus. On the fetal left side should be the stomach, cardiac apex, and descending aorta while on the right side, the liver and inferior vena cava should be visualized. The two atria should be approximately equal in size and the foramen ovale flap lies in the left atrium. This is because umbilical venous blood, which is the most highly saturated blood in the fetal circulation, preferentially streams towards the left side of the heart through the foramen ovale. The atrial septum primum should be present near the crux. The pulmonary venous anatomy should be seen entering the left atrium, noting the normal connection of at least one right and one left pulmonary vein. The two ventricles should be approximately equal in size and without ventricular wall hypertrophy. One way to identify the right ventricle is the moderator band, 
which is a large muscle bundle at the right ventricle apex. The ventricular septum should appear intact from the apex to the crux. The crux should be intact. Both atrioventricular valves should open and move freely as seen in the video clip. Normally, the atrioventricular valves are offset in which the tricuspid valve septal leaflet inserts on the ventricular septum closer to the apex as shown by the red arrow than the mitral valve as shown by the white arrow. This is also known as the seagull wing appearance of the atrioventricular valves since they are not located at the same level. Five chamber view. In the five chamber view, the aortic root is visualized and is connected to the left ventricle. The anterior wall of the aorta should be in continuity with the ventricular septum while the posterior wall of the aorta should be in continuity with the mitral valve. Left ventricular outflow tract. Similarly, in the left ventricular outflow tract view, the aorta originates from the morphologic left ventricle. The anterior wall of the aorta should be in continuity with the ventricular septum while the posterior wall of the aorta should be in continuity with the mitral valve. Moreover, the aortic valve should move freely and is not thickened. Short axis view of the great vessels, right ventricular outflow tract. The pulmonary artery originates from the morphologic right ventricle. It normally courses towards the left of the more posterior ascending aorta and crosses the ascending aorta at almost a right angle as seen in the video clip. This is an important point since transposition of the great vessels shows parallel and not crossing vessels arising from the ventricles. The pulmonary artery is usually slightly larger than the aortic root and the pulmonary valve moves freely and should not be thickened. Here is another example in which the pulmonary artery is shown to course towards the left of the more posterior ascending aorta and crosses the ascending aorta at almost a right angle as seen in the video clip. The right ventricular outflow tract is confirmed as the pulmonary artery only if it branches. Here, the artery is seen branching into the right and left pulmonary artery. The normal pulmonary artery continues distally towards the left side and into the ductus arteriosus, which is shown by the red arrows. In the short axis view of the great vessels, the left atrium, right atrium, tricuspid valve, right ventricle, and main pulmonary artery can be identified. The main pulmonary artery, which bifurcates into the right pulmonary artery and ductus arteriosus, wraps around the cross section of the aorta at the level of the aortic valve. The right pulmonary artery courses under the aorta and to the right. Here is the same image with the right pulmonary artery indicated by the red arrow and the left atrium by the white arrow. Sometimes in the short axis view of the great vessels, depending upon the insinuation of the transducer, the right pulmonary artery is more distinct as shown by the red arrow and the left atrium may not be visible well. Here is another example in which the right pulmonary artery is more distinct as shown by the red arrow. Three vessels and trachea view, three vessel view and transverse aortic arch view. In the three vessels and trachea view, the main pulmonary artery is in direct communication with the ductus arteriosus, has the largest diameter of the vessels is the most anterior and is leftwards. 
The transverse aortic arch, or dolphin, is located between the main pulmonary trunk and superior vena cava. The superior vena cava has the smallest diameter of the vessels, is the most posterior, and is rightwards. The trachea, which is seen as an echogenic ring surrounding a small, fluid-filled space, is located posterior to the superior vena cava. Both ductal and aortic arches are positioned to the left of the trachea and form a V shape as they both join the descending aorta. Here is another example. Again, both ductal and aortic arches are positioned to the left of the trachea and form a V shape as they both join the descending aorta. Now in the three vessel view, the main pulmonary artery ascending aorta in cross-section, and the superior vena cava in cross-section are visualized, but not the transverse aortic arch. The three vessels are arranged in an oblique line, with the pulmonary artery being the most leftward anterior vessel, superior vena cava being the most rightward posterior vessel, and the ascending aorta located in between. The relative diameters also decrease from left to right with the pulmonary artery larger than the aorta and the aorta larger than the superior vena cava. In the transverse aortic arch view, two vessels are seen. The transverse aortic arch, or what we call the dolphin, has an oblique course which crosses the midline from the right anterior to the left posterior chest. The superior vena cava is visualized to the right of the aortic arch. Abdomen, stomach. In this view, the fetal stomach is located on the left side of the abdomen. The cross section of the descending aorta should be in front and to the left of the spine, while the inferior vena cava is located to the right side of the spine. The situs is determined by comparing the cardiac apex position and stomach. Both the fetal heart and stomach should be on the left side. If they are not, then situs abnormalities should be suspected. Normal cardiac situs is situs solidus. As seen in this video clip, the left fetal side shows the stomach, cardiac apex, and descending aorta, while on the right side, the liver, and inferior vena cava should be visualized. Ductal arch. The ductal arch consists of the right ventricle, pulmonary valve, main pulmonary artery, and the ductus arteriosus connecting to the descending aorta. The ascending aorta is located centrally. One of the characteristics of the ductal arch is that it has a hockey stick appearance because it is derived from the pulmonary artery. Therefore, the ductal arch has a wide curvature that is almost perpendicular to the descending aorta. It is noteworthy that the normal ductal arch can look different depending on the fetus. For example, on the left image, the ductus arteriosus is easily seen and appears wide. However, for the fetus on the right, the ductus arteriosus is more narrow, but is still normal. We want to introduce another important concept here. Please remember that both ductal and aortic arches are positioned to the left of the trachea and form a V-shape as they both join the descending aorta. This is shown by the red arrows, but please note that they are located very close to each other. Therefore, when examining the fetal heart in the sagittal planes, you must be sure that you are examining either the ductal arch or the aortic arch. Be careful not to obtain an image that is an overlap of both arches. For example, it is easy to obtain what one thinks is the ductal arch, but is actually not the true arch. In this example, the image on the left appears to be the ductal arch, 
but it is actually an image that overlaps both the ductal and aortic arches. If you pay close attention to the video clip on the right, the image will change so that the true ductal arch, which is shown here, will appear. Aortic arch. The left sagittal aortic arch is comprised of the ascending aorta, transverse aortic arch, and descending aorta. Since the aortic arch makes an acute circular curvature, it has a candy cane appearance. The aortic arch gives rise to three arterial branches, the brachiocephalic or anominate, left common carotid, and the left subclavian. The aortic isthmus is the narrowest part of the aortic arch and is located between the origin of the left subclavian artery and connection of the ductus arteriosus to the descending aorta. Superior and inferior vena cava. In the right sagittal plane, the superior and inferior vena cava should be visualized entering the posterior aspect of the right atrium. Here is a video clip showing both vena cava entering the right atrium. This has the appearance of looking at an airplane which has landed at the airport in which the wings are the superior and inferior vena cava. The inferior vena cava should not be confused with the umbilical vein and ductus venosus shown using color Doppler imaging in this video clip. In conclusion, we have reviewed the normal characteristic features of nine fetal cardiac views automatically generated and displayed by the fine method. These are known as diagnostic planes. This presentation was intended to help sonologists understand normal fetal cardiac anatomy in general. Thank you for your attention.